yes, you're watching me wear the same thing in a few videos. I have a dog with newborn puppies. You can see them in the background. So I'm just taking advantage of any free time that I can use to film videos. So <laughs> that's that. If you're brand new, make sure to subscribe, hit that like button, hit the notification button, and leave a, ca uh, a comment down below. I was gonna say, oh my God, what was that? Leave a comment down below because I am going to be filming my very first anti haul of uh, 2021. We've only, um, just completed the first full week of 2021 and we already have stuff that I want to anti-haul. Yes, I have my phone right in front of me, <laughs> but this video, I had to film it because of Mac. Dang, Mac, I don't know what happened to them. They went from being the it brand on YouTube and they've lost their magic. I don't know if their creative director left, what the hell happened to them, but they used to be so well known for their collabs and all of a sudden everything they release, especially like collab wise, has been so underwhelming. I feel like the last really good collab that they had was the Star Trek collection um, that I was just like obsessed with. I have a video up on this channel, but I think that was pretty much the last time I was excited for a Mac collection and that's been a few years. They released a collab with The Sims. I love The Sims. I grew up playing The Sims. <laughs> I started playing The Sims back in like middle school. Um, played it in high school. I even used, I think it was The Sims 2. Yes, I think it was Sims 2 or Sims 3 that I used in high school for like science projects. <laughs> when we were do, talking about genetics and I was like, uh, yeah, I love The Sims. Uh, I don't currently play it because I have an old MacBook Pro that I don't think it could handle <laughs> playing The Sims. Hopefully this year will be the year that I get a PC for gaming purposes so I can play The Sims again. But yes, Mac Cosmetics released the most underwhelming collaboration I have ever seen. Um, they released a collab with The Sims, which turned out to be the chalkiest, the most lackluster palette imaginable. Like, does this scream Sims? No, it does not. And it turns out it wasn't even intended for the Sims. It was a palette that they released called the Solar Something. It turned out to be a palette that is currently on clearance if you go on Macy's. And they just literally, they literally just created the outer carton and slapped the Sims on the carton and called it a day. The Sims collab, that's why the names don't make any sense. Uh, you have names like Moon Rock, Copper, Aura, Blackberry, Sugar, Quarry, uh, Metal Mauve, Cosmic, Suit, Lunar Cycle. Yes, you have those names because it, it was intended for the Solar Something Shit palette. But they kept the names, they kept the same ashy tones. Uh, they used a creator that um, my friend Jonathan told me that she was, she played a huge part in the expansion of skin tones in the Sims game. So they used a creator, a black creator. They had her wear this ashy ass palette and they want to sell that as a Sims collab? Are you freaking kidding me? Uh, I mean, there's so much wrong with this launch. I repurposing the palette like I'm, I'm all for sustainability but <laughs> at least make it make sense if this was repackaged to be a lunar new year palette i mean it would still be kind of like ugh, but it would make a little more sense with the names in the palette at, at least more sense than having this be the sims palette and yeah, people were shitting on it. I was shitting on it on Twitter. I probably got the most retweets and likes in the Twitter that I've ever gotten in my life. <laughs> and yes, people were upset, rightly so. If I want a Sims palette, I want a damn Sims palette. I want the freaking weirdest, weirdest ass names. Um, <laughs> my dog Bowie's just walking outside. My mom's with him, but. It's just funny seeing him like <laughs> wandering around. Okay, yeah, so I want the weirdest like Sims, Sims, 
want the simlish uh, names possible in the palette. I want a green. I want a um, I want blue. I want crazy colors. And the thing is, the makeup in the Sims um, and a few people were showing me screenshots of the Mac makeup in the Sims. It's crazy as makeup. Why on earth would they not do something that they have in the Sims makeup pack, but in real life? Like I said, there's so much wrong with this, including the price. The price of this palette is $32. It's a nine pen palette. I feel like a lot of us now, especially with ColourPop, why would you pay $32 for a nine pan eyeshadow palette, especially for a nine pan ashy eyeshadow palette? Just take your money to ColourPop. Another launch that just left me like dumbfounded was Hourglass finally, finally releasing uh, a trio meant for women of color. Yes, after years and years of people complaining, and it's been at least five years of people complaining, they finally were like, here you go. Here's one palette meant for women of color. Just one. Man, like, there's no excuse. <laughs> there's really, truly no excuse for high-end luxury makeup brands to be like, we're only releasing this one palette. If you don't suit it, sucks to be you. It's not fair. It's a very racist thing to do that, to assume that women of color don't have the money to be spending it on luxury makeup, which is uh, just, just, I mean, take a take a moment to think about it. That's basically the message that they're sending to their audience by not intentionally not releasing colors that would work on, you know, darker skin tones. Um, so they, yeah, they finally released a trio. The trio itself is, it could have been a little bit darker. It could have been a little bit more um, dark skin friendly. But yeah, I feel like this is their attempt to be like, here you go, and also an attempt for them to get some of the criticism, um, to get some of the creators to lay off on the criticism. It's too little, too late. You had more than five years to do this, but they chose not to until white creators started calling them out and boycotting them. How convenient. So. I, man, I, I used to love Hourglass, but they've just been so damn disappointing. I don't want to support a brand like that. Beautiful products, but if it's led by business people that just clearly do not care about catering to, um, to makeup lovers of all skin tones, then I'm not interested. Talking about ashy products, um, Tarte used to be one of the brands that were, they were my favorite brand at one time. So they released a brand new Tartlet and oh my god, this is like the most ashy palette ever. It's like 15 plus shades of ashy. What the hell? If this was Tarte's attempt to, um, make a comeback, generate some excitement, um, they clearly missed the mark. This is something that should have been released like maybe five, six years ago. It reminds me a lot of the Urban Decay Naked 2, like that rose gold palette. Reminds me a lot of that and I think that one's still in the market. So why, why, why would you release this now? But yeah, they also included, <laughs> they included swatches on like a tan complexion and also a deeper complexion and just like i thought these eyeshadows look so fucking patchy i just i can't show off how patchy these colors pull on darker complexions do it because this just proves how freaking out of touch tart is i just i don't know what they can do as a brand to ever generate the exact excitement that they used to a few years ago. I, I feel like they're going to be the next brand that gets bought out by either like, I think it's probably gonna be Estee Lauder or L'Oreal. I don't see them sustaining their business. I feel like they're going to need a parent company to step in and save the brand. So yeah, I feel like it's, if they haven't been bought out, which I think they still haven't been bought out, 
it's going to happen soon. It's not a brand that's successful like they were a few years ago, so someone's gonna have to intervene and buy them out. Should I talk about more eyeshadow palettes? Let's do that, let's do that. I feel like it's not an anti-haul unless I talk about ColourPop. And ColourPop just released their five pan eyeshadow. This is a brand new format that they're releasing. Very reminiscent to the Natasha Denona little palettes, but those little suckers are like 25 bucks. They're super tiny, not even, I. <laughs> Natasha and Denona, I can't justify their prices. And I know $25 isn't too much, but they're so freaking tiny that I'm like I'd rather just buy a nine pan eyeshadow from from ColourPop. So ColourPop has released their answer to the Natasha Denona palettes. They I mean they don't look bad. They look decent. Uh, some of them have the pressed glitters, which I'm not a humongous fan of. Look at the little puppies. <laughs> They're so cute. So some of them do have the pressed glitters, but I think um, I personally would not buy any of the ones they just released. But I'm excited to see what other um, curated five pan eyeshadow palettes they come up with this year. I'm excited. I like things that are small and compact. So yes, I'm anti-hauling them, but I'm also looking forward to seeing what they release with that new format that they have. But they're nice. They're not bad. I'm sure people will buy them. Um, and they do have some nice curated selections, like there's a warm neutral palette, there's one that reminds me a lot of the Charlotte Tilbury, the Rock Chick Quad, because it's those like taupey, steely gray shades. So if you wanted that palette, but you want to save like probably 30, 40 bucks, get color pop instead. <laughs> but yeah, I, I just, none of these palettes speak to me, but I am excited, so I'm anti-hauling this first round, but not the five pan eyeshadow palettes. Should we talk about Anastasia? Let's talk about Anastasia. Anastasia Beverly Hills. Man, that's like, similar to Tarte, they used to be such an exciting brand and then they just lost it. They're just, uh, I'm also, have they been bought out? I feel like they haven't. But I wouldn't be surprised if they do get bought out by another larger company. Um, maybe this year, next year, because I, and this is maybe like the makeup retail person in me. Um, yeah, I don't see them sustaining the business the way that they have the last two years. And people are just not excited. I don't see people buying Anastasia products the way that they used to. So they released um, this collection that has like a brow gel. They have a, like a crystal highlighter, very reminiscent to the Fenty Beauty, um, what is it? The Diamond Bomb or that really shimmery um, highlighter. And there's also a clear lip gloss, a clear lip gloss. If you want clear, um, just, um, I don't know. I feel like you don't need to buy Anastasia to buy a clear lip gloss. Um, Kim Chi Chic has really nice lip glosses. Elf has nice lip glosses. Maybelline has really nice lip glosses. Like, it's a little too late for Anastasia to be hopping on the clear lip gloss. <laughs> oh my god, like if this is Anastasia's attempt again to generate excitement, like this is not it. I, I see you trying, but you're not trying hard enough. Like this is, <laughs> what is this? Oh, man. So Fenty Beauty released their first powder foundation. Bare Minerals is quaking right now. <laughs> I know it's not a mineral foundation, but I mean, Fenty Beauty just does not miss. They have the shade range and Bare Minerals has a very good shade range, especially for the clean beauty market, but they can't top Fenty. They cannot. They simply cannot. And I've heard really great things about the Fenty Beauty powder foundation. I just... I haven't been wearing foundation, so I'm going to anti-haul it, but this is a great launch. This is an anti-haul product that I can say, like, this is good. 
<laughs> but if you're in the market for a powder foundation that's in a compact, I'm pretty sure this is going to be better than the Bare Minerals Bare Pro powder foundation. I was not a fan of that. I found it dry, the shade ranges, and eh, it's fine. I, I would end up using it more as a setting powder than an actual powder foundation because even on my oily skin, I found that it sometimes would cling on to dry patches. Like it, I just wasn't a fan. I was a bigger fan of the Bare Pro Liquid Foundation. Uh, yeah, they're, I, I feel like Bare Mineral should be worried. They should because this is how you do things. Fenty doesn't miss, generally speaking. So yeah, they're quaking right now. Can I anti-haul uh, Dragon Beauty as a whole? I think Nikita Dragon is a horrible person. I feel like her lack of respect towards the pandemic and just being a good influencer. Because here's the thing, even for the Tana Mojos, the Jake Pauls, the TikTokers that are partying and ignoring all social distancing and COVID protocols, like, um, you guys are a piece of shit. You have the easiest jobs. You can be at home creating the content, collabing with people virtually. You have the setup to do so. And the fact that they're constantly ignoring that, that means you're a piece of shit human being. And I feel like Nikita Dragon is a piece of shit human being. And you could easily... Hey, Sakura. You want to talk about Nikita Dragon? So what was I saying? Uh, oh yeah, Nikita Dragon. I don't want to support a business run by an influencer that clearly doesn't give a shit about what's happening. And I'm gonna anti-haul everything. Dragon Beauty, Nik I never enjoyed Nikita Dragon's um, content. It, I just, she released some powders and a setting spray. Nothing exciting, but the fact that she is just that dense of a person that thinks creating content and being this celebrity you're not a celebrity she's infamous for doing shitty things she likes that she likes the attention so i'm gonna anti-haul her everything with nikita dragon i will anti-haul and the very last thing that i want to talk about talking about an influencer um emma chamberlain released a skincare line which um i have i don't have too much of a problem with her. Um, I feel like she's, she looks like a cool girl. <laughs> I like watching her TikToks. Like she just doesn't give a shit about anything and I respect that. Um, she did get caught partying a little bit, but I feel like she has definitely calmed down and she just stays at home and does her own thing, which is good. I appreciate that. But she released a skincare line. Personally, I wouldn't go out to buy it. Um, it's nice that she wants to step into that world. Um, I have heard from like dermatologists and everything that this the ingredients aren't the best, but she does have a very young audience. So it's good that she's getting them interested in skincare. Um, I do feel like there's better alternatives um, that are more affordable for the majority of our audience. You have The Ordinary, you have Good Molecules, you have CeraVe, you have uh, more brands. So I'm personally not interested in her skincare launch. Um, maybe if she releases something that's fragrance free or has better ingredients, maybe I will be a little bit more interested, but yeah, she released it, it's there. Um, personally, I feel like there's better products that are more affordable, but that's my take on it. That's it. What will you be anti-hauling? Let me know in the comments below. I have a puppy on my lap and her puppy's on my bed. So I'm gonna get her something to eat. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Make sure to subscribe, give this video a like, and um, yeah, and let me know what you'll be buying. Let me know what you think about the Mac and Sims collection. I mean, not collection, collab. Oh my God, imagine if they would have repurposed a whole freaking collection. <laughs> imagine Max Selena, slap on the Sims. Just scratch off the Selena. Here you go, a powder blush. Now I'm gonna be skeptical with every single Mac collab. Is it repackaged? Maybe it is, maybe it's not. The internet will definitely find out. Man, <laughs> oh my God, who would have thought? Who would have thought? I'll see you guys very soon in my next video. Uh, me and Sakura are peacing out. Say bye.
Hello, my name is Sakura. My card captor Sakura. Yeah, we're leaving. <laughs> Bye!